Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, you will learn how to run specific tasks periodically using Quarkus Scheduler. Let's start and follow my steps. Before starting, make sure to have installed in your system Java. In my case, I have installed OpenJDK 17 and also Apache Maven. We are going to create the first Quarkus project using Apache Maven. In this video, we are going to use the version 2.7.5. The name of the project will be Quarkus Scheduler and we are going to specify just one extension, the RESTEASY extension. Good. Let's open the project with a text editor. In my case, I'm going to use IntelliJ. Inside the pom.xml file, we can see the Quarkus version 2.7.5 and the RESTEASY extension. Let's go back into the terminal and with the command Quarkus add extension, let's add the scheduler extension needed to run periodically task. Perfect. We can see our scheduler extension inside the pom.xml file. Let's create a new package called scheduler and inside this package create a Java class called counter scheduler. We have to put the application scoped annotation and declare a counter variable of type atomic integer. Let's put the get method to return the current value of the counter. The first method that we are going to write is the increment each 10 second to increment the value of the counter every each 10 seconds. To achieve that, we have to use the annotation scheduled on top of the method using the property every with the value 10 second. In order to display the value of the counter, let's create a new Java class called counter resource. Inside this class, let's specify the path annotation, inject the counter scheduler and implement a simple get endpoint called get counter to return the value of the current counter. Let's try our project. Open the terminal and run the project in development mode. The server is up and running and listening to the port 8080. Open another tab in the terminal and use the curl method to call the counter get endpoint. The value of the current counter is 4, still 4, and after 10 seconds, now it's 5. Let's wait. And now it's 6. Perfect. Now let's create the second method using the scheduled annotation with a cron expression. Let's call it cron job time. Also in this case, we increment the value of the counter. Write a cron expression to invoke the task at 8.45 each morning. As a parameter of the method, add the scheduled execution because we are going to print in the console the execution time. Good. Before trying the new method, Let's comment the method increment each 10 seconds. Open the terminal and type S for the live reload. Let's use the curl to invoke our endpoint. Good. The current value of the counter is 0. Let's wait. Now we can see in the console the execution time. Let's invoke again the endpoint. 
the current value of the counter now it's 1. Just perfect. In the end, let's write the last method called cron job config to increment the value of the counter using the notation scheduled with the cron expression. But in this case, the expression is coming from the configuration of our application. Now open the application.property file and put the configuration counter.cron.expression with the value to run every 5 seconds. Let's try it. Good, we can see the log cron job config completed and the value of the counter is 2. Let's enable also the increment each seconds method. And now we can see the value of our counter increments. Now that we know how to use the Quarkus scheduler, I want to show you how to use it in another scenario, like calling a REST APIs. In my previous video, and inside my GitHub repository, you can find the project Quarkus MicroProfile REST Client. This project has been made with Quarkus version 1. In the second part of the video, we are going to update the project with Quarkus version 2, use the Quarkus scheduler to run periodically tasks fetching the list of episodes of a specific TV series. First, let's clone the project and open it. Let's update the Quarkus version from version 1.11 to 2.7.5. Then open the terminal and add the extension scheduler. Good, now we are ready. In this project, we have two Java bin represent the TV series and episode. Two proxy Java class to call an external service to fetch the information about a TV series and the list of episodes. This external service is API. TVMaze.com. Let's try to call the REST endpoint to fetch the list of episodes related to the TV series CentOS. Let's try the other REST endpoint to fetch the information about a specific TV series like, for example, The Last Dance. Good, now we are ready to refactor the project. Open the TV series resource class where we can see the logic of calling both endpoints. What do we want to do now? We want to separate the logic to fetch the information about a TV series in real time when the user sends a request to our get endpoint, and we want to fetch the list of episodes inside a separate task that run each minute or on a specific hour of the day. Let's start our refactor. Remove the part to fetch the list of episodes, then put the list of episodes as an array list inside the TV series class. Let's send back as body of the response not anymore the list of episodes but the list of TV series. Before moving on, let's try the first refactoring. Open the terminal and run the project in development mode. Good, the server is up and running and listening to the port 8080. Open the Swagger UI page and try the get endpoint specifying the name of the TV series. Good, we have our response, but for the moment the list of episodes is of course empty. Let's jump back to the code and create a new package called scheduler, where inside add a new Java class called episode scheduler. Good. Before moving on to implement the logic inside this class, let's create another package service by adding a new Java class TV series service. The TV series service will be a singleton where we are going to define the list of TV series and two methods. 
one to get the entire list and another one to add a series inside this list. Good, let's inject it and use it inside the TV series resource. Perfect, much better like this. We have done this refactor because we can use and update the list of TV series inside our brand new episode scheduler. Inside the episode scheduler Java class, let's inject the TV series service and also the episode proxy. After that, create the method fetch episode to run every 30 seconds where we are going to read the entire list of TV series, select only that one that have an empty list of episodes. For each of them, use the episode proxy to call the api.tvmaze fetching the list of episodes. Store the list inside the TV series. Before trying the scheduler, add a simple log and change the second from 30 to 15. Let's try our modifications. Inside Swagger UI, call the get endpoint. Good, the list of episodes is empty. Let's wait and call the same get endpoint with another TV series. Now we can see the list of episodes of the TV series The Last Dance and empty list for the TV series Stranger Things. Good, the list is not more empty. The source code of this video, you can find it inside my GitHub repository. Feel free to clone it. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel to be always updated about new videos that I will upload. And see you in the next one. Bye.